if you're thinking, gosh, why does my board spin backside? And don't you dare to tell me I'm scooping my back foot. I can do both ollies and shavits, know the difference between popping and scooping. So I asked a lot of people and watched the YouTube videos, they always tell me it's either because of the placement of my back foot, or it's because I open my shoulders. Are they really the reasons? If so, why? If that's what you have in your mind, you are watching the right video. I've been thinking about the same question ever since I started skating. And I think I finally found an answer. You are watching Wild Trick, and today we are going to study the science behind one of the most frequently asked questions in kickflips. Why does my board spin backside? I was able to flip my board after some practice. On the other hand, I always had this problem that my board spun backside, making it flip like a sort of a ferial flip. Initially, I thought it was because of my back fit, because I put it on the same spot as I do when I shove it. However, I knew I was not scooping my back foot, and I was really certain that I was popping my back foot straight down, and it felt just like normal pops in ollies. Without knowing what to do, the problem persisted, and I watched literally every tutorial in YouTube, but no one seemed to have had a clear answer for that, saying, you should not put your back foot in the pocket, you should not open your shoulders. I am not saying those tutorials are wrong. It was just giving me this impression. Are we not missing something that really matters? Cause if aligning shoulders parallel to the board really matters, how come Luang Oliveira can kick clip with his shoulders opened at like 90 degrees? And how come some people say you should put your back foot in the other pocket like Mike Mo does? I mean, why does he not do hard flip? And this came up to my mind, the spurious relationship. You ever heard of that? For example, statistically speaking, it is safe to say the heavier you are, the higher you can jump. What? Right? Truth is, when we grow up, compared to when we are just babies, we become heavier and we can jump higher. The spurious relationship refers to a misleading correlation between two elements. In reality, there is a third underlying element that really causes the correlation. And that's exactly where we're standing in the world of kickflips today. And that is also what we are going for in this video. Between the problem that your board spins and traditional advices, like you should put your back foot in the pocket, there must be a third element that really causes the problem. Symptoms. Before going directly into the third element, let's break down the symptoms. The problem that the board spins backside can be classified into two types. Type number one. Unintentional varial flip type. In this case, the board starts spinning right after flicking. This means your board virtually makes a varial flip rotation when you're not even trying to do so. Type number two, unintentional backside flip type. In this case, you wind up rotating after catching your board. This means the flip itself does not seem to have any problem, but your feet turns backside and make it look like a backside flip. Now that we know the symptoms, let's also sort out elements that could potentially cause a problem and find out which element causes which symptom. Elements. Element number 1 and 2 that could cause a spin. Notorious foot placement and the angle of shoulders. I'm not going to say put your back foot in the center or close your shoulders without even letting you understand why you have to do that in the first place and what happens if you don't do that. Number 3. Swing of your back foot. If you're watching this video, you'd already know you should not swing your back foot to kickflip. However, under certain conditions, you could easily wind up swinging your back foot even when you're trying not to. We are going to study elements that could potentially make you swing your back foot against your will. And finally, number 4, let's also think about the possible effects of overflick and overpop that we discussed in the previous video. If you don't know what they are, please make sure to check out those videos too. Please note that this topic is so profound that I needed to divide it into two videos. So we'll be talking about the possible effects of overpop and overflick in the next video. Verification. Number one, foot placement is the reason why your board spins backside. Just a lot of tutorials have been saying this. Let's just objectively verify it for the last time. According to the existing tutorials, you should not put your back foot in the pocket in kickflips because doing so makes your board spin backside. 
But as a matter of fact, I do put my back fat somewhere closer to the pocket. And some of you might have this experience. By putting your back fat in the heel side pocket, which is supposed to spin the board front side if putting your back foot in the pocket really causes a problem. But in reality, you can backside shove it. So what exactly is happening here? We are going to use this physics simulator to objectively analyze what is going on. As you can see, this skateboard weighs 5 kilograms, 30 inches long, 8 inches wide, pretty much a regular skateboard. And this ball weighs 5 kilograms and 10 centimeters in diameter. And the green line indicates the ball's trajectory. And if I let the ball free fall, right in the center of the tail, the board obviously pops straight up and comes back straight down. So what if I drop it on the pocket? According to the traditional theories, you should not do this because it just makes your board spin backside. Moment of truth, it pops straight up. This is because it is the farthest edge of the tail that has the final contact with the ground as the board gets into the air. So whether you pop the center of the tail or in the pocket, as long as you pop it straight down, it doesn't make much of a difference in terms of the direction of the board to go. In other words, it is the red circle that hits the ground no matter where you pop anyway. So I think we can finally say, the foot placement itself is not the reason why your board spins. And the element number one foot placement has been proven irrelevant, at least partially. The reason why I have to use such an obscure expression is because of this. What you're seeing is a simulation of the same model. The only difference is the ball has the slightest momentum to the left. Let's see what happens if I drop the ball. As you can see here, with only the tiniest amount of horizontal force applied, it flies away backside. So, as long as you pop straight down, it doesn't cause any problem. Nevertheless, putting your back foot in the pocket could easily lead to spinning your board backside if you don't do it right. In conclusion, as far as the foot placement is concerned, it is okay to put your back foot in the pocket. But it might lead to unintentional spin of your board if you don't do it right. So what exactly is it to do it right? Since that has a lot to do with the next element, we are going to talk about that later. And once again, as for whether foot placement itself poses a spinning problem or not, I'd say no, not as is at least. And this is just my opinion, but I personally think you don't really have to try to put your back foot right in the center of the tail. At least, you don't have to be obsessed by that. It is rather important to put your back foot somewhere you feel comfortable, including even the pocket, cause popping there itself doesn't spin the board after all. Element number two, the angle of shoulders. Man, I still remember the time I thought I was not gonna be able to kickflip because of this. But I can assure you, you can still kickflip with your shoulders open. Which does not mean that I recommend it to you though. Okay, before going into the details, it is important to understand why we want to open our shoulders. Okay, please take a look at this. In kickflips, we place our front foot with our heels hanging off. So we don't fall to the heel side. We want to compensate it by putting our back foot to the toe side, especially when you ride loose trucks like I do. I admit, this is a bit exaggerated, but as a result of placing your feet like so, it becomes natural to open your shoulders. And opening shoulders itself is not a source of the problem, since it does not generate any horizontal momentum as long as you don't swing your shoulders. I will be honest though. I'm in fact swinging my shoulders unconsciously. As you can see here, before popping, my shoulders are opened, but after catching, my shoulders are pretty much aligned to the board. And this happens in reaction to my front foot flicking to the heel side and my shoulders rotate to the other direction as a consequence. Let's talk about this some other time. Going back to the cause of the spinning problem, we just learned how susceptible our boards are to the horizontal force. And that is the point. When we open shoulders, we move our back foot to the toe side, which further leads to this. Tilted body axis and too much distribution of weight to the toe side. With your body axis leaning to the toe side, 
even when you try to pop straight down, since the direction of your pop will also be slanted along with the body axis, you will wind up popping slightly to the heel side, and this could actually be used in practical contexts like Chavez. Lean forward so you can put your weight on the toe side and just try to pop straight down. You will find yourself spinning your board and jump into the toe side without even thinking about it. Please be reminded however, I'm just showing you what leaning forward does for the sake of explanation of the concept. Leaning body axis itself is usually not a good thing. Just try to keep your body axis straight upward all the time. Going back to the verification of the various relationship, Based on what we heard, there is supposed to be causality between the spinning problem and the angled shoulders. But in reality, there is a third underlying element that really causes the problem, and that is the weight. Weight distribution. So it is not because you put your back foot in the pocket, and it is not because you open your shoulders, but it is because you are leaning too far to the toe side which unintentionally spins your board. So the very old flip type of the spinning problem can derive from leaning your body axis to the toe side, not directly from opening your shoulders. It's more like opening shoulders may let you lean forward, and by leaning forward, you might wind up swinging your back foot. To prevent this, make sure to keep your body axis straight upward all the time. And I apologize we couldn't talk about the backside flip type in this video. I promise I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just a brief preview though. Just think about the time when you pop too hard. Didn't this happen? And when you flick too far to the sideways, you will eventually have to bring your front foot back on your board. So wouldn't that generate any unnecessary energy? We will talk about those topics in the next video. If you can like this video, that will definitely give me a boost. Also, please leave a comment so that I know what to explain next. After all, it is your why that grows this channel. Thank you for watching and until next time.